Hello, mystery book fans. It's Dick Gutal with steps for using archive.org. And why would you want to use archive, or in other words, Internet Archive? Because it is a huge repository of scanned books. And you can get into there, into that site, open up an account, and use those books for free. So this video might be overkill. I think for many of you, using archive.org will be intuitive. But if you are doubtful or timid, this is for you. So here's what you do. You open up your internet browser, you go to archive.org. It's really easy. You type that into your address bar. All right. And then this web page will pop up. So you're going to need to register to have an account. So you're going to go over to the sign in button which is right up here on the top black menu bar, all the way to the right, almost to the right. The little person icon is the uh, symbol of this area. You click there, and it takes you to the sign-in or login page. However, since you don't have an account yet, you can't log in. So you need to observe that little tiny link that says sign up for free. So you click that link and the next thing you do is fill in the sign up page. You just follow the obvious directions, enter your email address. This will not be visible to anyone else. Choose a screen name this might be visible to other people, so I would not use my own real name. Uh, if you see Frank Hardy 01 on there, that's me. Uh, <laughs> uh, then choose a password. Be sure to write it down so that you're able to use it. And then I suggest you unclick this checkbox here so that they will not send you general announcements, which is another way of sending, uh, another way of saying sending you junk mail from uh, Internet Archive. So forget that, unclick that, and then press the sign up button. All right, the next thing you want to do is watch your email, watch your inbox. Look for an email from Internet Archive. Then open the email. It will look a little bit like this one that I got. And what you need to do is click the link in the email to verify, to confirm that this is your real email address and you do want to register. So you click that. And... Uh, and then you, you, you stay there for another uh, few seconds and wait for the welcome letter to come in. All right, that will confirm you as a free member. You'll get a letter like the one here in this slide. So after you get the welcome letter, you're set to go. And the easiest way to get back to the uh, archive.org is to just use this little link here right in the letter. Just click that link, see? The first bullet, upload terms to archive. or items, I guess, to archive.org. Doesn't matter, just click that little link, boom, you're back to the home page. Now, when I say home page on uh, Internet Archive, I just like to point out that this is how you're going to recognize what it looks like. Uh, there's a search box, always on the home page, right? It's, it's large. It's right in the middle here, right? See it? It's got that big icon with the 
I don't know, educational Greek building or whatever, <laughs> Roman uh, structure or whatever. And then right to the right of it are these uh, various uh, <laughs> repositories of materials, but the search box is there where the arrow is pointing. So this whole thing is the search box, really. If you don't see that, you're not on the home page. And if perchance you get lost somehow or other, exploring or clicking on some obscure buttons on here, you can always get back to the home page the same way you get back to the home page on almost any other website. And that is, you would uh, click on the logo in the upper right hand corner the name of the website, Internet Archives. See it there? You click on that and you're back to this home page. So now that we're here, what are we going to do? Well, we got to sign in, right? You, you registered for an account. Now you need to sign in so you can use it. So we're, we're back to the same place here again. We're going to click that same button there again. And this time when we get to the login page, we're ready to go. Put in your email address, put in the password that you wrote down, and log in. All right, then we're going to use that search box. We're, by the way, we're back to the home page again automatically. Once you click that uh, login button, you're back here. So there's the big, I kind of enlarged it here, the search. Uh, box on the home page, you're going to uh, type in the book title and the author's last name. So here's the big icon telling you that this is where the search box is. Type it in, title and author's last name. The reason we put the author's last name is so that we can reduce the clutter in the list of results. It's amazing how many other I have the needle type of books are very closely worded the same way and there's something like a hundred results if we don't put the author's name. Anyway, you put that in there and click go. Right? Boom. Go. All right, then we come to the results page. In other words, these are all the results from the search. They come up as book covers. All right. So there's not too many. I think there's like, I don't know, 13, 14 different items, something like that. But of all of these, I mean, some of them are Reader's Digest condensed versions, and we're not going to use that, are we? Um, <laughs> so there's actually six, right now anyway, six complete copies of the book that we were searching for. And they have different covers, but they're all the same book. And uh, so you, you're going to take your pick of which one you want to use. And the book you pick, uh, since there are several different ones, you, you what will end up happening is you go in there and you take a look at it and see how nice the print quality is. Because you're looking for the easiest to read, the easiest on your eyes. And I haven't looked at all of them, but um, I've looked at a few. And the, of the few, the one I, I liked the best was this one down here. Uh, so you can see it's kind of a yellowy cover, uh, and it's got the uh, stiletto there with a little blood dripping from it. Now the one right before that is very similar, but the cover is a lot whiter. But I found the print in there to be so light that I could barely read the book. So that's you know one of the crazy things in here. So, uh, but this one's pretty good. So you can click on that. When you click on that, it takes you uh, to the book. And you are now in what is called the online reader. And you need to familiarize yourself a little bit with the controls for the reader. And first of all would be uh, opening the book and turning the pages. So there's you know, at least two ways to do this one of these two little buttons down here at the bottom. By the way, the control bar is this gray bar at the very bottom. And so we have the two little buttons. One turns the page 
uh, forward in the book, and if you want to back up to a previous page, you use the left hand uh, button down there. But you can also just click on the page itself. And if you click on this uh, side here, uh, the book will open. And uh, I've, I've clicked it here a few times, three or four times, and I've already passed the title page, the copyright page, and the preface page. And by the way, the preface is actually important to read in this book, or valuable anyway. And anyway, I've passed already a few pages, so now I'm on chapter one, the beginning. Now, I've got the whole book up there, and it's a, a little, might be a little difficult to read here in the slide, but uh, if you open it to full screen on your computer, and of course the larger your computer screen, the better it's going to be for you. So, uh, how to make it full screen? Well, way down in the bottom on the control bar, in the far uh, right hand corner is a little button. When you click that button, it will enlarge to fill up the whole of your computer screen. Um, so the other thing after you've done that is to possibly fiddle with the magnifier controls here, which makes the page a little bigger or a little smaller to kind of fit your screen a little, uh, uh, you know, to maximize it, to get the type face as large as possible uh, without making it so inconvenient uh, that it's so big you have to keep, you know, scrolling around to go through one page. You don't really want to do that. Uh, so it's de definitely different from a Kindle. On a Kindle, you can enlarge the individual uh, words and, and letters while not changing the size of your page. Whereas here, if you want to enlarge it, you're enlarging the entire page. So that means it may or may not fit as well. So it's not as nice as a Kindle, but it's free and it's available. So, um, th so that's the tips and steps uh, to get registered and to choose a book and to open the book and kind of maximize the your use or your you know appearance of the book on your screen. Uh, when you're done reading uh, and you're reading it in uh, full screen, sometimes it's a little tricky to get out of full screen because <laughs> the control for that is not uh, you is not clickable. Typically, when you have full screen on your computer, you use the escape key on your keyboard. Okay, escape. It says ESC probably on the key. And that allows you to get back down to normal size. Now, the final thing that I want to mention here uh, is uh, to log out. So to log out, you go back up to that uh, spot where the uh, account is, your account, and you've got the little person icon at the top and your username, Frank Hardy, there is showing, say mine. And when you click that, you get this little uh, drop-down menu. And the bottom item on the drop-down menu is logout. So it's as simple as that. Go up to your account, click that, then click logout, and you're done. So finally, one other thing. The next time you come back to archive.org, after you sign in, all right, you signed in, so your, your account is open. Now, how do you get back to your book? What you do is, again, you click on this icon, and this time, look for the item that says, My Loans. You click on that, and lo and behold, it takes you to a page where your book is. All right, so that's all of it. Now, these steps are also available in a PDF, a, a four-page job aid, like what you see here in these slides. Now, if you think you would like to use that, you can download it and print the job aid if you want. Uh, it's pretty much close to what I said during this video. So in any case, please take action now. Get reading the book, Eye of the Needle, 
whether you do it on Kindle, computer, a hardback book, or an Audible CD, get the book and enjoy it.